Hey, it's Mr. Dodge, and we're back here at Boyd Hill. We're gonna do the Eastern Lubber Grasshopper. Sounds kind of boring, but uh, take a look at these clips. We are outside today and we have many friends with us. If you see some of the guys hanging out in the leaves here in the background, what you're actually looking at are Eastern Lubber Grasshoppers. Um, I also have two on this leaf here in my hand. Just to show you the striking difference between a nymph and the adult stage of this, you can see the black one is the nymph and the adult is that brightly colored yellow guy um, who's obviously bigger. But we're gonna get to all that. First, I wanna start off with, um, if you live in Florida, you have seen these guys before. Um, they're considered a pest down here. They're actually native to the southeastern parts of the United States. So you'll see them, um, Louisiana, Georgia, Florida, all of those different states. So they're definitely native, but a lot of people aren't a big fan of them. And that's because these guys have a great appetite. And, um, so generally they only come out, so they only come out once a year. So they only get one generation a year. So generally you'll start seeing these guys uh, from March to throughout the summer. Um, so they'll start emerging from March to June, depending on what region of the United States you're in. Um, so when they first emerge, they'll be black like this nymph here that we have. Obviously, they're going to start out a lot smaller from the egg. Um, and, and the thing with the eggs is they are actually underground. So the, the females have an ovipositor similar to a cricket. And so she'll lay her eggs underground at about three to five centimeters in depth. They'll stay there over winter and then they'll come out in June. Um, so they, they do what we call molting, similar to other things that we've talked about with the exception of like reptiles and amphibians. A lot of your insects go through molting stages um, and then eventually they'll get to their final instar um, where they can reproduce and they have their wings at the ready. So these are winged insects, um, so we can see the wings here. It takes up about half of their body. Although they are winged, they are flightless. So these guys mainly move around by crawling or they can jump a short distance with their legs. Lubber grasshoppers, their main means of movement is just simply by walking. Um, they're actually called lubber because they're kind of considered lazy and clumsy. So oh. lubber comes from the old English word lobre, which means lazy or clumsy. Uh, the only reason why people actually consider this a pest, even though it is a native grasshopper, is because it can really destroy a lot of ornamental plants that people keep in their yards. Um, this plant here, you can see all of these, um, all of the destruction that has occurred. And if you have like one or two of these guys, it's not gonna be a big problem. But the issue is when they're in the nymph stage, they, te they tend to hang out in groups. So you're gonna have a whole lot of them um, because the females lay so many eggs and they generally lay them in the same area. When they first emerge, you're gonna have a ton of the nymphs. Um, and so all together, they can be very destructive. Now These guys have a couple of defense tactics. Um, the first is when they're in that adult stage, you can see that it's very brightly covered, colored. Now these guys are always uh, this yellow. They come in different kind of variations. Um, some of the adult lubber grasshoppers are actually still darker colored like the nymph. Um, so just because you see this guy doesn't mean they always look like that. But the lightly colored ones have this coloration because it's kind of um, warnings to a lot of the predators. Uh, if we think about other insects or other animals in the animal kingdom that have really bright colored patterns usually that's an indication of i'm poisonous or i'm not palatable in some way um, and that is the case for these guys so they're brightly colored to kind of deter 
any predators once a predator gets this guy in their mouth and they find out how nasty they are how toxic they are they they can even be fatal to some predators they know not to touch that that thing again although there are a few things that will prey on the lubber grasshopper the loggerhead shrike is a bird of a bird had, that has learned how to eat these guys um, so what the loggerhead strike does is it will impale the loggerhead in some way maybe on a barbed wire fence or or on something like that <laughs> so the loggerhead strike will impale the lubber grasshopper on something like a barbed wire fence and, and allow it to decay and as it does kind of break down those toxins break down as well and then the shrike will come back and then it will eat the grasshopper because now it's no longer affected by the toxins um, so it's key to note that these guys are considered poisonous and not venomous so as we discussed in the previous video but just as a refresher um, venomous is something that if something is venomous to you it, it has to be injected into your body um, this is considered poison because you would then have to ingest the, the lubber grasshopper in order for the toxins to then affect you. And basically what that means is when they're in the nymph stage, they look very similar to what they would look like in an adult stage. They're just a smaller version. If you think about humans, when we're born, although we're a lot smaller as babies, we pretty much look like what we're going to look like once we age. Like this guy. Oh, yes. <laughs> and he looks like me. Yeah, and so... <laughs> So a nymph going through different uh, instars or different stages in their life is similar to how we call uh, babies, babies, toddlers, and teenagers. So it's gotcha.